Welcome to the Film Florida podcast. I'm John Lux, and I'm the executive director of Film Florida. Before we get to our interview, if you're not already a member of Film Florida, please consider joining at filmflorida.org. Please also consider going to our website and donating $20.24 for our 2024 fundraising campaign. Visit the Film Florida merchandise page at filmflorida.creator-spring.com to purchase Film Florida t-shirts, sweatshirts, coffee mugs, and more. All merchandise proceeds go to the Film Florida Filmmaker Grant and Scholarship Fund. Mario Garcia and Michael Alfieri are filmmakers and graduates of the University of South Florida. Together, they made The Throwback, a comedy about an underappreciated and stressed supermom whose holiday season mental breakdown causes her to believe she is a college-age party girl. Michael produced, and Mario wrote and directed the movie, filmed throughout the Bay Area. We talked to Mario and Michael about their time at USF, their careers, being able to come back to Tampa and work together, and more on this episode of the Film Florida Podcast. Here's my conversation with Mario Garcia and Michael Alfieri. Welcome to the Film Florida Podcast, Mario and Michael. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us, John. So, Mario, let's start with you. Uh, how did you get your start? Where did you come from? I live in Tampa, and, and I was always interested in storytelling. I think I was a insomniac even as a young kid, so my parents got me a TV in, in my room like when that was unheard of, like even before cable, and I would always watch that late-night movie. And so I kind of fell in love with that form of storytelling early on, and took a family trip to Los Angeles in 1988 and I saw this book called uh, How to Write a Movie in 21 Days and I thought wow I can do this and and so I did I wrote a movie in 21 days and that, that was pretty much my my start of course I thought it was the best movie ever a couple years later I moved to Los Angeles and that industry has a way of letting you know how how bad you are in a hurry so uh <laughs> but I kept at it as a writer and um, Mike moved out there a few years after me. And um, so even when I moved back, you know, I still kind of had my foot in in that industry through through Mike, who worked for producer. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, that's that's basically how I got started as a writer. I think in 2001 or 2000, I finally got a, an agent and a manager. And, and you would think that that was the official launch, but but it, it was still kind of <laughs> uphill after that. And Michael, how about you? How did you get, find your start in the industry? Yeah, starting the industry, I've always loved films. And I went to USF. Funny enough, I wanted to major in film. And the year I got there, they had dropped the film program. Perfect. <laughs> so, perfect. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> so then I went to MassCom. And then I wound up getting a creative writing degree. So I figured I'll be, you know, like a struggling screenwriter, come out to LA. And I was lucky enough through another mutual friend to get an interview with uh, producer wound up being my mentor still is today. And I'm working with him. Uh, David permits his name. So I interned with him for a week, right when I moved out here. And then, uh, the next week he goes, Hey, would you like to be my assistant? And I didn't even know what I was doing, but he took a liking to me and I knew movies and yeah. So that's how it started. It was like a whirlwind sort of like getting your masters in, you know, in the film business. So that's how it started out. And yeah. And now you guys both went to uh, USF. Is that where you guys kind of built this connection as collaborators? Yeah, for sure. I think we uh, we were always talking. I mean, how many people do you meet that that are interested in, in writing movies? <laughs> and so, uh, so we always kind of talked about it, and it seems like a long time ago, but uh, actually, it was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I specifically remember a conversation I had with Mario in the early nineties. Cause he was a little bit ahead of me at USF. He graduated before me. And it's funny, we were talking about screenwriting and I just remember, yeah, you know, hopefully one day we get to do something together. You know, we were always friends. Like we stayed in touch all these years and we just never let go of the dream basically. And we could talk more later how, it, yeah. you know, we got the film started, but yeah. But interestingly enough, like the, the way I got the agent, and the manager originally was because Mike was working for David Permit, and I sent you a script. Saying I do. Saying yes. I do, that's right. And Mike started kind of passing it around through that office, and then and David Permit got took a liking to it and introduced me to a bunch of agents. So, yeah, so it was like, a, I, I always say that having Mike in L.A. was like I never left because 
you know, he was there kind of doing the doing the work there. Now, Mike, you mentioned that you got to USF, but they had dropped the film program. So just talk about in general, like the experience at USF and how that prepared you for your filmmaking endeavors. Well, really learning story is what really helped. Um, I eventually, like I said, got a creative writing degree and it wasn't necessarily screenwriting, but it did help me understand story basics and story structure. And really a lot of the times in any business about relationships, right? So having somebody like Mario who had the same interests as me, as far as film and storytelling, that was a huge thing. Having that other person sort of be an inspiration, you know, to in same uh, interest as you, uh, that, that was very helpful. And Mario, how about you? What do you remember about your USF days and in, in preparing you for what was going to be uh, the future? Right. So I majored in math comm. And in fact, I remember being in an editing bay and it was video editing, but they had all these like maybe 10 or 15 stacked up in a corner of these old film editing machines, you know, where you would put the film <laughs> yeah. up. So that's how much they got rid of the film program there. But uh, but yeah, I think I kind of second what Mike said that it's actually probably better that we learned storytelling like the the old fashioned way, you know, as far as, as structure and uh, because, you know, transitioning to screenwriting, it's just a, a structure. I mean, it's just a different platform, but it's still kind of the story is everything and, and you know, beginning, middle and end. And so I think. You know, I was able to kind of, uh, in the MassCom program at USF, you know, the teachers knew a lot about video production and, and things like that, and, and and that was helpful. But I, I took American literature classes and, and French literature classes, and I did Don Quixote in, like, Spanish, where I actually had to read it in Spanish. And so all that really kind of prepared me for becoming a storyteller. Yeah, there's a lot of different avenues to get into this industry. It doesn't always have to necessarily be the traditional film school avenue. Right. Yeah. 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 So let's talk about why we're actually here, which is the throwback, which is the new film that is out that you guys made. Mario, as the writer, give us a brief summary of the film for those that may not know or and, and talk about your inspiration behind the story. Sure. Uh, the The movie is basically about a couple in the middle of a midlife crisis, basically. And, you know, they're in kind of professional ruts, personal ruts. And the wife wakes up one morning uh, after a post-traumatic stress event, and she can't remember the last 26 years. She still thinks it's her sophomore year of college, uh, <laughs> okay. except that, you know, she's now saddled with this overweight, balding husband and kids, and and she's realized that none of her hopes and dreams from when she was 19 years old have actually happened. So while she's kind of hanging around with the neighbor's 19-year-old daughter and partying, the dad now has to kind of take over the mom duties at home and it's about learning to appreciate what we have and, and that getting older isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's it, it's a gift, actually. Now, in a previous interview, you mentioned your own connection to the film's central theme of second chances. It, it, expand on that a bit more and, and share what this process has meant to you. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I don't know that it, that it happened on purpose, but it happens that Mike and I aren't starting out. You know, we're not 25 or, or even 30. Uh, sorry to give away your age, Mike. <laughs> But, you know, we're at a point where we've been at this for a while and even moved on to different things for a little while, thinking, okay, it may never happen. And I think both of us kind of were at this point, and it's like, I think that we have to make this happen rather than leave it to other people. And so that's kind of a central theme in, in the movie because, you know, there's this middle-aged couple who think this is it, like, okay, this is going to be the rest of our lives. And the movie explores that concept. Is is it true? Is, is this the rest of our lives? And, and you know, the, the result is that it doesn't have to be. And so I think that, you know, it kind of mirrors and it kind of worked out that way by accident. It wasn't like I wanted to explore that theme, you know, internally. It just it just worked out that way. And Mike, you know, as you guys have mentioned, you always kind of wanted to do a movie together. What made this story the right one for you guys to collaborate on? Well, to piggyback on what Mario said, I'll go a little back in time a little bit. We always had a foot in the business, but even me being out here, I was out of the business for a while, for about 12 years. And then I woke up one day, quit everything I was doing, and decided to get back in. And when I did that, one of the first people I called was Mario. I said, hey, listen, I'm 
going full tilt back into the entertainment business. What do you have? You know, what and we've always bounced ideas around. So we talked about some ideas. And this one always resonated with me to go back to the, you know, second chance type of theme. I really felt in my own life that was me here in LA. Like I, I was like, why am I in LA if I'm not making movies? You know, mm -hmm. that's the whole reason for being out here. And this story just really resonated with me. So I said, this is the one, you know, and so we just started developing it and, you know, and that's sort of how it worked out for this particular story. I'd written like the first 60 pages, maybe 10 years ago, Mike, I have to look. I mean, it was a long time ago when we picked it back up. I think, I mean, I think you remembered it more than me. You're like, Hey, do you remember that story about the mom that wakes up? And I was like, yeah, yeah I think so. And I went back and looked at it and I sent Mike the first 60 pages that I had written 10 years earlier. And he was like, yeah, this is the one you gotta, we gotta finish this. And for those that aren't aware, the, the film was was shot in Tampa. So talk about how important it was to use Florida-based crew and cast as much as possible. It's funny because I don't think that, Mike, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think we ever considered anything else. We always had a plan to shoot it in Tampa. I mean, I was born and raised here and um, and Mike lived here. And so we both are passionate about the area. And so... Working with the local crew also was awesome because I got a chance to meet people in this community, which I hadn't met before as far as the film community. Mm -hmm. And um, I was always impressed how vested and, and involved everyone was and kind of pushing in the same direction to make sure that we made a great film. But, um, you know, we were fortunate early in the process to work with Elaine Schneiderman Schmidt, who was just, I mean, she was for as little ex experience as we had in, in making a film in Florida, I mean, she just filled in so many blanks. Right. Early on, it was great to work with her. And then we worked with Doug Fox, who who kind of connected us with a lot of local crew. The film commissioners were awesome. I mean, I'm, I met Doug through Tyler uh, here in, in Tampa. And Tony Armour in St. Pete uh, was awesome as well. So, and, you know, the fact that I could sleep in my own bed every night uh, after a stressful, you know, 18-hour day was was just a bonus. And besides uh, all the locals, talk a little bit about your main cast that you brought in for the film. Who are they? Because they're, they're faces that people are going to recognize. Yeah, I'll tell you. Uh, so early on, Mario always liked Justina Machado, who wound up being our lead actress uh, in the role of Kate. Um, and funny enough, I think the first actor that he said, no matter what, we have to have this actor in the movie was Bobby Lee, who wound up playing Charles. And I that was interesting to me because you know he's a co-star but like that was the first actor that mario was like no matter what happens we have to have bobby lee in this movie and that's like a whole nother story <laughs> but we wound up def you know we wound up getting yeah. him and we've always liked will sasso we think he's just such a talented actor yeah yeah and you know he's he never gets the shine so to speak he's usually you know the, the character actor he's typically not the main guy but we were like man this guy's so talented we need to showcase this guy and he happened to just fit the role perfectly and, you know this is a testament to mario's writing because especially as an independent film it's so hard to even get the attention of the agents and managers for right. sometimes for the actors right and once the script was out there and specifically uh justina machado's manager once she read this and justina read it they were like wow you know really the reason we were able to get the actors we were is because of the writing and mario's writing and, it always, and that goes back to story is the key mm -hmm. you know to, to any of these things so yeah and it wasn't just the top build i mean i think i just did an interview yesterday and someone asked me about you know my process in directing these people and, and my process was to stay out of the way actually you know because because <laughs> they were so good and they were so experienced but the real blessings are the not top build actors. Yep. Like, you know, we had Greg Pitt, who also went to USF, and he had one day of work, and he just was awesome. And Stacy uh, Michelle, who's from Orlando, she came in, I think, two or three days, and, I mean, just brought sunshine to the set that day. All the ladies who played the moms, uh, who had, you know, even if it was one line, even if it was just background actors, I feel that... In that part of it, we nailed it uh, in, in terms of getting great performances from, from these actors. And Mario, you talked a little bit about your relationship with Tyler Martinolich from Film Tampa Bay. Uh, filming in Tampa, you were able to take advantage of some of the local incentives. Talk about how important that was for selecting the location. 
Oh, wow. I mean, I think it meant the world to us to be able to have that kind of partnership and, and their support um, and across the Bay in St. Pete as well. I mean, I think that we were going to do it in Tampa regardless, so it didn't really sway us in deciding to do it in this area. But the fact that I didn't just shoot it in Tampa, but I made Tampa Bay a part of the story. Like, you right. know, there's, there's movies sometimes that are shot here especially at the beach that never reference like where they are. It's just, we shot here because we needed a beach where here, I really wanted to make it obvious that this was Tampa and, and, and it was the backdrop for the story. And the best thing I heard was when we did the screening in LA, somebody said, wow, I want to go see Tampa now, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I think that's the incentives are there for that reason, right. Uh, to do that. And, um, you know, I hope we did it justice. Well, and one of the, the fallacies that people bring up about incentives, you know, to, to your point, what you just said is you wanted to film in Tampa regardless, but when you get that local incentive or a state incentive, if that may be somewhere else, you don't just take that money and put it in your pocket. You reinvest that into the film. That allows you to hire more crew and pay your people a little bit better. Talk a little bit about the, how important that is. Michael, go ahead. Yeah, I will say it was extremely important to have these incentives. We literally could not have finished a film in post unless we got the incentives. So we basically put the incentives that we received from Hillsborough and Pinellas County back into the film and were able to do more in post than we originally planned. And it really was, it was super important to have these incentives yeah, know, for us, yeah. for especially independent film. Right. Now, I know you guys did a screening in Tampa Talk about how it felt to sit in the Tampa theater and watch the film on the big screen. Yeah, I mean, I, I tell this story because a lot of people ask me, you know, is, is it surreal? Like, even even recently, the trailer debuted on uh, Access Hollywood, and Mario Lopez was talking about the movie a little bit after, and and even that wasn't surreal. The only the most surreal moment to me was that I remember going on a date to Tampa theater, like in 1990 when it, it hadn't been remodeled yet. So it still was kind of like an old dusty theater, musty, but they had a uh, foreign film night on Sundays. And so I, I took a date there to watch cinema Paradiso and it was just a beautiful movie. And, and at the, at the end of the movie, I was like kind of teared up a little bit and I didn't want her to see, see it. So I just was like, Hey, let's wait for the credits, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> and, and, uh, but I had this this vision, and I, at the time I, I wasn't spiritual, and I'm, I'm more spiritual now as I get older. But I really had this vision that one day it'll be my movie in this theater, and it'll be my friends and family uh, here. And that was 1990, and I hadn't thought about it again until Tyler sent us an email saying, "Hey, we're we need to do a community screening, and we're doing it at the Tampa Theater." And so that's been the most surreal moment that I had this vision in 1990. And, you know, I wish it would have happened a little sooner, but, but it, it took 30 something years and, and, and there I was, here's our movie and it's playing with all my friends and families. I mean, we sold out, it was like 1,100 people in that theater and you could just feel the love and, and excitement that night. So, you know, the investors probably don't want to hear it, but I said that if all that came from this was this night, then I'm good. Yeah. Um, but that was then. Now I now I definitely want people watching it. <laughs> yes, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, a lot of people make films, but getting in a position where people will actually see the film is a completely different story. Talk about the process of finding a distributor and making that deal and, and building that relationship. Yeah, so everybody had, you know, in this business, you have a dream to make films, right? But then it's like, oh, wow, well, who's actually going to put it out so people can right. see it? <laughs> Um, we were lucky enough that once our cast was announced, we did have some interest even before we shot the film, especially from Myriad Pictures, who wound up to be our uh, distributor in the States. They were interested from day one, you know, but we wanted that, you know, we wanted to have some autonomy over what we made. So we kept it independent. And then after we finished, you know, we had other people interested, but the fact that Myriad was interested from day one, even before we shot the film and how passionate they were about it, um, we wound up going with them. But yeah, it, it is a tough process. I mean, there's all different ways you could go about it, going to film festivals to get people to notice. We were sort of lucky that we didn't have to go that route because we, we had interest from day one, but that's not always the case. Right, right. Now, it's been a little while since you you made the film. I mean, it wasn't last week or anything. And now 
we have a theatrical release. What are you most excited for audience to experience from this film, Mario? You know, I, I guess the most exciting part for me is, uh, and again, it's probably unintentional because because in storytelling, you just want to entertain. But I, I really feel that audiences could get something out of this. You know, it, we're busy living our lives and, you know, you blink and, and 20 years have gone by. And so I'm excited that we created a reminder of how blessed we are and and to appreciate family and and friends and and the good things we have around us. So I'm excited to share that and I'm just excited to kind of put it out there. I mean, it's been in it, it's been in our heads for for years and and for better or for worse it, it'll it's going to get out there now. Yeah. I mean, Michael, besides the obvious of it getting out there, what are you most excited for audience to experience? Yeah, you know, for me, this movie is about second chances and also to not take people for granted in your life. And I think that's just a good reminder for everybody. And one of the great things about Mario's storytelling is he's able to infuse humor with heart, which is not always easy to do. So, you know, we've had people like say during this movie they were crying and then five minutes later they're laughing. <laughs> so I think people are going to go through all the emotions with this movie and hopefully just get a reminder that, you know, life is great sometimes, you know, and uh, just to not take your family and friends for granted. And you're definitely going to laugh. So that's probably the main thing. Yeah, that's good. Uh, and now, uh, Mario, as a uh, Florida based filmmaker, what's your advice for other Florida aspiring uh, filmmakers? Well, I mean, it's easy to look back now, um, but. I met these guys that are 21 years old and they made this 50 minute movie uh, the other night. And I just, I love that, that they're doing it, you know, like now you can shoot a movie on your iPhone and there's, there's really no excuse. Uh, I mean, you don't have to go out and make a million dollar film like we did. Right. But, mm -hmm. but I, I'd say that the self doubt is, is really the only roadblock to anything. Right. And so don't be afraid of making a bad movie, you know, because, or, or writing a bad script because you need to do that. Uh, I have a drawer full of bad scripts, you know, but I think you get better every single time. And so as Mike knows, I mean, Mike was my sounding board, like self doubt was the one thing that could have prevented this movie from happening. Right. And, and at so many points I was ready to kind of just give up and say, ah, you know what, not never going to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but what I did learn from this experience, and that would be my ultimate advice, is if you're relentless and you just believe that you can make it, you could do it, you'll do it. And so if it's a $500 film shot on your iPhone, do it. Mm -hmm. Just do it. And then you'll get better doing it the next time. Yeah, great advice. Uh, uh, Michael, how has the experience changed you as a filmmaker? Or has it? You know, I, I thought I knew a lot, but... During this whole process, you realize real quick how much you don't know. <laughs> I think one of the things that I learned, because we both came up sort of during the studio era of making, you know, like you're always waiting for permission, you know, getting your script read, getting this and that. The biggest takeaway I, I learned is don't wait for permission. If you have the passion to make something, just figure out a way to do it. And I remember a long time ago, somebody told me out here, uh, if you're going to work in the entertainment business, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah. So just perseverance. There's always a way you just got to, and as a producer, that's the first thing you have to be a problem solver and figure out a way to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's really what I've learned. And I will take with me on future projects is you just got to make it happen and just, you know, persevere. Yeah. Look at our beards, John. I mean, mine was a, <laughs> mine was a, a brilliant mahogany, beautiful thing and now now look at me you know it's it just takes its toll but yeah you just definitely have to persevere that's funny so mario tell us what we need to know where do we see the film how can we check it out well the film will be streaming uh on demand on amazon prime and apple uh on apple tv and google play it's in theaters uh in select cities tampa and miami and then chicago la dallas but yeah, you could find it uh, streaming online. And, and we have a website at thethrowbackfilm.com where you can get specific instructions on how to watch it. Perfect. Michael, what's next for you? Well, I have a few projects in development. Uh, 
two that are closer to going. One is uh, called the Goldsboro. Uh, well, now it's called the Goldsboro Incident, but it's based on the Goldsboro Broken Arrow that happened in 1961, three days after JFK was inaugurated. We accidentally dropped two nuclear bombs on ourselves in North Carolina. Of course, mm -hmm. they didn't go off because we would, you know, right. would, it'd be a historical moment, but it's a wild story that was top secret for over 50 years. And I'm producing that with David permit and um, also Sterling Macer jr. Who's an EP on, on the throwback. And then I have a psychological thriller called walls that we're prepping now to shoot overseas, hopefully by the end of the year. Cool. Mario, how about you? What's next? Well, I'm, I'm still writing cause I'm a writer at heart. And so mm -hmm. um just writing the next comedy and that's it. Well, I want to uh, thank both of you for taking the time to be with us today, uh, sharing your story, sharing the journey of the throwback. And of course, we sincerely appreciate you making the film in Florida. Thanks for being on the Film Floor podcast today. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the Film Florida podcast. For more information about Film Florida, go to filmflorida.org and like or follow our social media pages. If you're not already a member of Film Florida, please consider joining at filmflorida.org. Please also consider going to our website and donating $20.24 for our 2024 fundraising campaign. Check out the Film Florida merchandise at filmflorida.creator-spring.com. And please remember to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast.